This is an overview of my real-time weather dashboard on my boat. This is using a couple of different pieces of software to create the graphs and to store the data. The most important being Signal K. And Signal K, there is a plugin called uh, Signal K to Influx DB that basically takes all of the information uh, within Signal K and spits that out to uh, a database, which is Influx. Uh, it's a time series database that you can learn more about on the internet. Uh, and I'm sending it to a particular database name called Rendezvous, which is the name of my boat, uh, and doing batch writes and leaving all the, the default settings uh, here. You can exclude certain data um, going over there. So if you don't want to record your navigation data uh, or other things like that, you can, you can choose to configure it that way. But I've left it pretty vanilla and most of the data is being sent over there. Uh, Influx is the database again, and it's pretty easy to configure. Uh, I have mine set up um, just for this purpose. I'm not using it for much else. And in the last three or four months, uh, I've gathered about 2.9 gigs worth of data, uh, which is uh, quite compact considering that it's logging all the time, 24-7, uh, and a lot of data from wind data to navigational data to tanks uh, to engine data when I'm underway. So it's, it's pretty efficient um, uh, to use uh, for storing all that information. Once it's in there, uh, now it's time to actually take advantage of that through dashboards, and that's where Grafana comes into play. And at the very basic level, you can see I've got a bunch of different graphs. This is my favorite um, dashboard, and I use it uh, aboard when I'm uh, you know, going from place to place so I can see what the weather was like that last day, and if there's a storm coming in or something like that, uh, I usually have it up so I can see wind gusts and things like that. Um, it's even more useful remotely so that if there is a storm or if there's colder temperatures outside, uh, I can check on inside, outside, engine room, uh, and all the different temperatures um, in kind of a graph format, obviously, but um, there's some quick views up here as well. So it's just a really nice dashboard to have uh, to see uh, how things are are happening uh, from the weather perspective. Grafana has an, an awful lot of uh, features, um, so you can have an auto refresh. I have mine set to one minute, but you can be really aggressive and have it update every 30 seconds. Uh, and even faster than that, you can have it update pretty much real time as the data is coming into Influx. Uh, I'm actually at home right now, so I'm doing this over a cellular connection back to the boat and I don't want it to uh, be overwhelmed with that many uh, requests. And then of course you can filter the, the range of data that you're seeing. So I can look at just the last hour um, or I can look at you know whatever the presets are in here. I can type my own time ranges in. And then if I filter down to a particular area and I'm wondering you know why did the wind go down here and come back up, I can just uh, select that uh, and see more detail about that particular time range. And it changes all the, re the, the other graphs as well um, to match that time range so that things are consistent in case you're looking for like a trend. Uh, or why that particular um, anomaly happened in the graph. So it's extremely user-friendly. Uh, it works on a mobile phone as well uh, and sizes down very well. And then of course, if you notice that as I'm hovering over things here, you can see the data points um, and uh, the, the specific data uh, value uh, for that area uh, as I'm hovering over. Uh, and you can set every single one of these options, uh, you know, as, as as granular as you would like. So um, let's go ahead and actually add a, uh, a new graph here. So we'll add a panel uh, and go into add query. So right now there's nothing showing. Uh, and by default, uh, you know, pretty much everything is coming across from signal K. So we could look for something like depth. So environment depth below transducer in this case. And this is the last six hours, so we can see, you know, a tidal change. Let's go ahead and do, how about seven days? We should see, ooh, I think that has to be a, one of the times I was out in the water. So we'll go back to two days there. That looks a little bit more interesting. So you can play around with the time ranges and make sure that the data that you're getting is correct. This is how we would build a new graph. Um, I, I'm going to guess this is in meters. Most things uh, in Signal K are in meters for, for depth. Uh, wind is in meters a second. Uh, temperature, strangely, which is something from 
NMEA 2000 days is in Kelvin, so you have to convert that. Um, but at least from the perspective of uh, this particular example, you can see that data looks pretty pretty correct. Um, you know, it looks like the tide going up and down with the boat at the dock. You go to a visualization and you can do all sorts of things. So we don't have to use a graph. We could use just a stat that could be at the top of a screen. Could use a gauge, which doesn't really make sense for tidal information unless you're building a dashboard that you would use uh, just to know how deep it is right um, at this point. A heat map is not really gonna be that useful because the tide isn't gonna vary that much to show a lot of, of differential um, highs and lows. But so a graph's probably the, the right thing to do. Um, you can change what's in there, um, the fill, the type of fill, um, what, what it's gonna show when you hover over it. Um, and this is just one piece of data on a graph. You can add as many of them as you would like. And then you can mess with the axes and things like that. So I mean, from a, from a boating perspective, if you think about other products and things that, that um, you're probably used to working with, uh, this has a ton of customization that you don't see in standard marine um, applications. And then you can come in here and change the title and say depth, uh, and then even put uh, and create alerts based on uh, the uh, the state, right? If there's no data, if the data is bad for a certain amount of minutes and so on and so forth. So it's extremely um, flexible uh, and really, really easy to use. Um, you can come in and if you're going to build something and you add a query and let's say we're going to look for uh, wind. So we'll say wind, how about speed apparent? Um, if for some reason this is in the wrong you know, um, unit type, which this is, I believe, meters a second, we could say we want to do some math. And I know from having to do this before that to convert meters to knots is multiplying it by that long number. And now it's in knots. So it's pretty easy to convert the data if you want to. Uh, it does it all on the fly for you. Um, you know, and then obviously we can come in here again and change the type of graph and the bars. For this, it might make more sense for wind to use a heat map. Um, so you can see the variation uh, minute over minute. So uh, these are kind of the, the, the big things I use these dashboards for is to monitor the weather when I'm remote and while I'm aboard. And it's super simple to do if you've got a PC and it can be connected to your NEMA 2000 network and you've got some of this data there. Um, you know, you should install Signal K and the plugin uh, and uh, then start creating some dashboards uh, and, uh, you know, share them out with the community so people can see those. I do plan on sharing mine with the, um, the Grafana community uh, and posting it as part of this article as well. Um, and hopefully, eventually, allowing people to see it real time um, without overwhelming my uh, network connection. Thanks for watching.